you might not be getting the number one Facebook ad specialist that's applied to the job, but you're getting someone who's super well-rounded with a lot of experience and a lot of different aspects in, in terms of what I could bring to our partnership, right? Between paid traffic, Facebook and Instagram, organic traffic, right? I've built up a YouTube following of over 5,000 people. I have a big Twitter following, these kind of things. And these are all things that I bring to my clients and offer to them, right? My knowledge and background in these aspects. Ryan, I appreciate the time and I look forward to hearing back from you. Okay, so I got the camera set up there. I got some lighting and shit. What I'm doing is I'm actually in an interview process for a possible client for Facebook advertising. I've made their short list of applicants and they wanted a video. They basically sent out a, a video that they made on their own to anyone who is still on their applicant list that they're looking to hire. And they wanted a video response, basically saying why I think I'd be the best candidate and what, you know, what I would do in the first month. Kind of like a strategy, basic, basically, for the campaign. And basically what I said was they're trying to build a relationship, a partnership, like a long-term kind of contracting relationship. That's exactly the kind of clients I'm looking for. I'm still new to this, right? I left my job about eight months ago. Since I left my job, like what have I done? I have about a handful of one-on-one -on -one full-time clients that I work with. I got hired as a Facebook ad specialist for the uh, Get Leverage freelance company. I built a YouTube following of like 5,000 people. My Twitter is four numbers long as well. I have an email list of almost a thousand people now. So, you know, these are all things that I can take to my clients and say like, listen, I'm a 25 year old kid. So refer to myself as a kid. Don't let the baby face fool you though. I'm a 25 year old kid who is probably more driven and more resourceful than any of the candidates that you're going to talk to. And I've done a lot of things on my own that, that are, I would say are priceless at this point, right? The experience and being able to say like, I've done that before. Not a lot of people my age can say that they've done some of the things that I've done. And when my clients are working with me, that's what I tell them. I'm like, you're getting more than just someone who is good technically inside of Facebook advertising platform. You're getting someone who has background in blogging, in content creation, in running paid traffic campaigns, but also building up an organic following. Like I know how to bring value to people. I know how to bring a, a message to people and I know how to put that message in a way that I can put it out in the world and have people resonate and connect back with it. So that's kind of what I get at, right? When I'm, when I'm doing this, this particular interview, like I'm not going to be like, listen, I ran a campaign that cost me 20 cents per click and 40 cents per lead or whatever, right? I want to give them more of a background of who I am as a person and let them know that in the long run, I'm the best candidate for them. So if you're working with me, it's not just a money relationship. Like I value relationships and I value the process and learning and, and doing these things with them as much as I value that paycheck and as much as I value another bullet point on my resume or another logo to put on my client list. So that's basically what I told them. And I think that's that's the gist of how I've gotten most of my clients. They see me as someone who's, who's young and up and coming and is very driven and like as I get better with all this stuff, right? As, as all this stuff kind of comes full circle, content creation and marketing and all this stuff kind of gets better simultaneously, that will also help their business. And I think they understand that and that's why they, they want to sign with me, I guess. <laughs> What's happening? A young Kelbina. He said you wanted to be on the vlog. This is my sister. She's looking for a boyfriend. She's accepting applications. Yeah. Shit. She said, I don't know if I've ever formally introduced her on my channel. No, tell you them. haven't. I'm kind of offended. Say hi. Tell them three icebreakers about yourself. Well, this isn't my best moment because I'm still intoxicated. Yeah, Kelly drank too much wine. She actually smells like wine from last night, like red wine. I literally only had a th three... You were yammed at the point. When I was leaving, Three, I was drunk. I was like, I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm driving George and Bake home right now. Do you want to come? You're like, are you gonna be really mad at me if I don't come? <laughs> I was like, no, I don't give a fuck. Like, just let me know what you're doing. Most senses were not making yeah. any sense to me last night for a little bit, but I also most senses weren't making <laughs> senses. I also don't make dolls that don't make sense. <laughs> I also woke up and then yesterday, and I went to work, and then had a yogurt and then got yelled at, and then I forgot to eat for the rest of the day, and then I came back to New Jersey and made some- Some tacos. Some tacos. Yeah, you're gonna restock my fucking ground beef, by the way. <laughs> Actually, I'm gonna wait for you to find out what I'm gonna do. What does I that had even a mean? I had, a, I had a really good idea this morning. To do to me? Yeah. What the fuck is that shit? Because <laughs> you're really sensitive about your groceries. No, only when I pay so now, for them. I mean, I woke up and my winter jacket was on my bed with me. Thankfully, <laughs> I wasn't wearing it. You tried using it as a blanket? <laughs> 
I mean, it's not that would have been the first time. We're going to the gym right now because brothers and sisters who work out together. Don't get fat. <laughs> don't stay together. We're getting a Wait, divorce what are you gonna, soon. What are you going to do? You know what I'm gonna do? At the gym? I did um, chest yesterday and shoulders the day before, and now I can't move my upper body. Yeah, I've done like chest saving, and back. I've so been much. saving legs for um, today. Not a hungover day. No, legs yeah. Are, you can't do legs. No, I know. I'm not gonna do. That. I didn't. And I didn't anticipate him coming back here until today. Because uh, I was you said you came back and got fucked up. Yeah, because yesterday. Trill. <laughs> what gym did you do? Um, so I joined one, it's called Ludlow Fitness. Are you okay? Called what? Ludlow Fitness. Ludlow? It's on Ludlow Street. Uh, $60 to join, which is whatever, and then it's $49 per month. Why is this camera not on me? It's just, if I'm talking. She wants more fucking air time. I usually set up a camera here, here, and here, and edit out all the good stuff. Really? No. Oh, I was like, what? Absolutely not. <laughs> I uh, bought that on Amazon like the other day because I use your Amazon Prime account with things like No, I got an actual camera that takes good photos. It's pretty sweet. I want to bring it to the city one day. I'm, um, fucking, I'm gonna let you take photos of me and I'm gonna pretend I'm not looking at the camera. Down. We can go to Soho for that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Get me one of those walls that says like, I love things so much. That's like graffitied on the wall and shit. Like every oh, Instagram bitch's favorite pictures. Like peace and love. And peace like, and love. Don't dick. break your heart. Don't protect, protect your heart. Whatever. I need Protect to get one of those. Protect your neck. Stuck, but I miss those days. <laughs> nah. I have to get a gift from mom. So. You didn't get her anything? Wait, so what's up with your YouTube? What are you doing? YouTube channel now. Good job, guy. You're driving the right lane. Oh, I forgot that everyone in New Jersey knows nah, how like, to drive. I don't even want to back up. You should just take... Yo. Oh. Jesus Christ! Fucking moron! What Love the fuck? That. Love that. Oh my God! If you can't drive, at least be able to afford a backup camera. Shit. Sam. I know, but off. can you see who's in that in that car? I don't know. You fucking do it. I Let just want to see know. what Here. fucking idiot. <laughs> Let the people zoom in on those people that come out of the car. I'm about to, because they can't fucking drive. You know and he leaves the door open. Oh no! It's a fucking teenager driving this car. Fuck you! He leaves a door open when he's dropping off. Ugh. When he's dropping off UBS packages like a moron. I got like dead ass backed up for like an extra six seconds after I that's, started beeping. That's exactly what happened when an old person <coughs> drove into my car in Township like shopping center. <coughs> and thankfully a police officer was just watching the entire thing. Really? Yeah, he was like putting money you, in, like, the, shoot him in, the, in the ATM, but it was like an 80 year old yeah, man. Yeah, fuck him. They need to get their and fucking also, driver's licenses checked. Well, that's like, what- on the Okay, this is going on. Why I had a lot of interesting things to say. the mic is actually pretty good but this is what the audio sounds like without the mic like the mic's not in right now so you can hear me talking the internal mic on this camera is not good which is surprising considering how much you pay for these cameras right and they talk about how they're so good with video and audio and all that bullshit but this is it without it and now this is it with the microphone so you can hear the difference i hope so i'm going to edit this afterwards but I, I think the audio picks up a lot better with it i'm about maybe a foot and a half away from the camera I could probably do my fantasy videos with this mic now and give a little bit better audio to the videos, so. And now this is my regular V-Lock camera. That was the Sony Alpha A6000 without the mic, with the mic. This is the Sony RX100 Mark IV. The difference between the two. Well, the first one is much better for photography. This one's just like a point and shoot, and it's really small, it's much smaller. You can see this is what the first one looks like that I was using. And I have another lens for it that comes out like this. Like, it's huge. This is the one I like the vlog with because it has a camera in the back that flips up so I can see what I'm looking at right now on the vlog. I can't do that with the other one which is honestly almost like a game breaker or game changer, deal breaker. Deal breaking, game changing shit on that camera. <coughs> so I do the vlog mostly with this and I'll probably stick to doing it with this. You can't get a mic with this one though which is 
kind of shitty because you can't really put a lot of accessories on it unless you want to like get adapters and plug it in and shit and it's super annoying but right now in the beginning of this video I was making a video for a possible client and I'm actually interviewing with them in a half hour so it's 10.30 Thursday morning, last day of the vlog. We're getting on the phone at 11, 10 a.m. They said 10 a.m. Central Time, 11 a.m. Eastern Time. A Google video call for the final interview. They said they'll have, um, they'll, they'll pick a candidate by the end of day tomorrow. So Friday, by the time you guys watch this, I'll either know or not know whether or not I got the job or got them as a client. Should be interesting. I have not run campaigns for someone like him yet or someone like their company. They're basically, one of them's like in real estate, but the, the plan for their company is they want to, it's almost like selling education or selling a, pro, a service or a product in which they're teaching other people how to sell uh, real estate, how to identify good markets to get into, to invest into. Once you get into those markets, how to buy, get freedom in your life via this path, like via the real estate path. But it's a good client to work with. They have everything set up on the back end. They know a lot about marketing and funnels and things like that. So those are clients that I enjoy working with for the most part that's in a half hour i have some reporting to do because i do that every thursday and i'm going to a concert tonight so this girl i'm kind of seeing don't get too excited now i'll probably introduce her in, in the next couple of videos possibly her brother is playing a band and they're playing at a place by my house tonight so i'm gonna go to this concert should be fun i don't even have any new year's plans yet which is ridiculous i think this girl i'm friends with is throwing a party so actually it kind of worked out local i'm not really trying to ever go into new york city or like hoboken or something for new year's eve that shit's just too hectic i'm not trying to pay like 115 dollars to stand at an open bar that's way too crowded and i've normally done like cool shit like me and my friends would rent houses in the poconos which is like a secluded area in the woods where you can get houses and just party in i went to nashville a couple years back what else did i do i don't know i usually do some fun shit but if i can't find anything good to do then i don't really like doing anything it's a new year trying to bring it in right i want to uh next next video i'll probably talk about my resolutions for the new year i haven't really thought of any to be honest with you yet but but i will you know your boy's always setting goals trying to better himself trying to be better today than i was yesterday trying to be better this year than i was yesteryear you're burning behind a candle right now that shit almost just set y'all on fire but uh i'll let you guys know how the call goes you'll probably get some footage from it Nick, what's up? Hey, Danny. How are you, man? Nick, what's up? Hey, Danny. How are you, man? Nothing crazy. I've got two kids, so... Okay. That'll, like, yeah, that'll, it, that'll put some handcuffs on It's me. like when you crack the system and you figure out how you can work from a laptop, man, it's the best. I can't imagine going back. I know. Um, so a little bit of history about Brian and I's company, and then I'll segue into stuff. So I'd like to do, learn a little bit, you know, about you and your business. I, I, I like the stuff you do on YouTube, and um, um, so yeah, tell me a little bit about uh, is it BDGE, right? BDGE, correct. Yeah, but tell me a little bit about that. Like, what's what's the stand for? Sure. Um, so I, I I guess you kind of. Sorry, I'm getting a weird echo. I'm gonna. Uh, find some headphones to plug in real quick if you don't mind oh, yeah, yeah i'll be honest whenever i have to tell my clients what bdg stands for i'm i'm a little bit embarrassed it stands for big dogs gotta eat and uh it, it goes back to kind of, it's an inside joke from my college days uh but but i guess on a more general level what it stands for is that it, it's it's more of a lifestyle for me um it's more than just like a media or a marketing brand or anything like that um and it, it just i i guess it kind of resonated with me because me and my friends would like say it all the time like if we were in competition or something someone would win we kind of scream it out you know and, and it just kind of goes back to who i am as a person and personality wise it's just about kind of wanting more and getting more out of you know whatever you're putting into it a company came in bought that company out and they're like we're going to kind of change the infrastructure around we're going to start pushing more towards social do you want to be our like facebook guy do you want to be our social guy and I was like, sure. I had no idea what I was doing at the time. I had never done it before, but I was like, this is definitely where, you know, the wave is going. I need to kind of get on that. So I, I started running with the colleges and universities and there was no one really at my job that had done it very successfully. So I was kind of learning on my own. I was messing up on my own and figuring out what kind of worked, what didn't work. But I moved to an agency in New York City and we were running with, with bigger clients. It kind of came full circle to me that like I always wanted like you guys talk about you're selling freedom right you're not like really selling a product you're selling a lifestyle and that's what I, I always knew like in the back of my head like consciously that's what I wanted overall I just wasn't sure how I could put like what I knew right like what could give me the financial freedom and mix it with like how, how could I do it so that I, I can work from my laptop and I can do that and I realized I was like 
this marketing stuff I'm doing, a lot of the clients really don't know about it. And I think that like what I'm seeing the results wise and and how the how the future is kind of coming, this is something that I could pursue, right? And this is there's so much opportunity in small and medium sized businesses, local businesses. I mean, I live in a suburb, right? I could walk down the street and run into 10 different local businesses and be like, hey, you guys need to start doing social. So about eight months or 10 months into that job in the in the marketing agency in New York, I ended up leaving. I had already had my YouTube channel going and everything. At that point, I think it was strictly just like fantasy football informational videos, but I kind of wanted to get more into vlogging. I don't know if you follow Gary Vaynerchuk at all. Super, super inspirational guy to me. Um, he's someone that I've always followed and he talks about how like vlogging is a very, um, a very cool thing, I guess. And it's like also like part of the next wave, but he always talks about how if you're, if you're trying to come up you want to uh, document over create, right? Not everyone's going to be good to create your own content. Like you have to be very, very, very good to eat, to be entertaining enough or informational enough in order to really get your content out there. But if you document, you know, your journey, people will be interested because it's very relatable. And that's kind of what I'm doing in my vlogs. So I'm documenting me building up my marketing business. I'm, I'm documenting me building up my YouTube channel and how everything's kind of slowly growing. And I put pieces of my week into this video. I'm noticing obviously as that part, as that portion grows, like my YouTube subscribing base grows, so does my my work and my freelancing and my business, right? They're, they're kind of growing simultaneously. That's perfect. I was just wondering because, uh, well, I see you guys like, I, the webinar seems like it's more top of the funnel stuff. Like you're almost trying to bring in people that aren't really in the game yet or it's on their mind or something like that, right? And uh, the book funnel, like you're talking about, um, you're targeting people who are looking to hire the next guy, right? So that's someone who's already in the, in the thick of the landlord game and, and that kind of stuff.